Hello and welcome to the Ratness Podcast, episode number 60 with Stu Nod. Whoa, hey! What up, Stu? <laughs> What's up, T? What's happening, guys? <laughs> Not much, man. Just getting getting it done. This is actually your number 60. We do 20 at a time and then we take a few like a few weeks off um uh-huh. to kind of like recharge the batteries and so thanks for being the last episode of uh season three man and season spend some time with finale. us finale yeah oh yeah honored to be here right. i've uh, caught a few episodes they're great it's uh it's fun watching the combos thanks, oh, thanks man. man thanks yeah it's it's always hard to like get out of it because like I, I don't know i try not to re-watch them or re-listen to them really uh I just I get in my own head about like how stupid I sound and what I could have said better or, like should have said. So I, I try not to like dwell on it, but it's awesome to hear that people, uh, you know, are tuning in and uh, checking it out because it's a cool platform to to find out about, you know, cool artists that you wouldn't know about unless uh, you really, you know, might have got lucky and found something from the other side of the country in a local shop or something. But that doesn't, you know, it's easier yeah. to think that happens than it, you know, really is. Cool. So where yeah, that was a lot of words that, right there. Yeah, buddy. I just I just uh, threw up a bunch of words at you. My bad, dude. <laughs> yeah. uh, so let's get into this. Uh, I've been a fan of your work for last two years, really, since I started Rat Nest. Yink, um, the zine you did um, was one of the first zines I think I got uh, from people that I wasn't familiar with. Maybe I should say. And uh, I remember mm-hmm. you reaching out, and then I looked at your work, and I was like, of course, this is. Awesome. This is right up the alley of what I'm trying to do. So thanks again for uh, working with me. And thanks again, especially for doing a page for the Ratness scene issue one. That was awesome, man. Definitely. Oh, yeah. The zine, the zine was fun. The, uh, the cover is disturbing. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it's, uh, sure. <laughs> it's, uh, it's very cool. Yeah. It's super, super nice work, guys. Uh, especially for a first issue, it looks great. Thanks, man. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's always tricky with print. There's always a couple mistakes. There's definitely, I'm not going to sit here and tell you every mistake that's in the zine, but, um, yeah. you know, it's, it's no, always like completely. I can do it better next time kind of thing. I'll try. I've never had anything printed and been hundred percent yeah. happy with it. It's always, yeah, there's always stuff that goes wrong. And, and most so of the time tough. it's, yeah. you know, most of the time it's just the artist that's upset with it. Like, um, you're your own worst critic, you know, no one else mm-hmm. is going to notice the little stuff, but yeah, absolutely. But that, I mean, as artists, I feel like that, not to get too deep right away, but that's kind of part of what drives us to create is like this, I don't know, this self, like, I don't know, I want to call it self-awareness, but this like, we get down on ourselves with, you know, I, Matt got this zine and I'm like, dude, it looks fucking dope. I'm thumbing through it. Like when they arrived and he's like, yeah, but this, and this was cut a little funny and this color's a little blurry. And it's like, bro, yeah. I get it. Like, but this, it, you're seeing only the smallest of small things and everyone else looks at it like, wow, look at this work of art. You know what I'm saying? But as artists, 100%. that drives us yeah. to like keep going and keep getting better. And, and in my opinion, kind of puts that heart and soul into it too. A hundred percent. Yeah. That's where progress comes from. And the, like, I know I have pieces, there'll be one thing about them that bothers me and I can't stand to look at it. And it's something nobody else would even notice. So, you know, yeah. I'm aware of that still, but it, you know, I guess it's good that it still drives you on to uh, just keep getting better. Have you ever had the uh, situation where you're like showing artwork and you might hang a piece that bugs you, but you're, you know, you're hanging it for the opportunity to sell it. And that's like the first thing that someone wants or like buys is the piece that you hate the most. Does that ever happen to you? A hundred percent. I've noticed that the pieces that get like the most reaction to the ones I was totally unsure of. <laughs> it's like, should I eat, you know, so I can put this out. Is it worth it? Yeah, it seems to be the way it is. You know, like, uh, what people are looking for when they look at art, like God knows. You know, it's all subjective. So, so true. Open to that. But, you know, as far as making stuff, I I don't think about that at all. It's completely about satisfying my own, you know, what I think looks cool. Hell yeah. Basically. I mean, your yeah. stuff's awesome, man. And you have such a distinct style. Um, I can see, like the the cohesiveness of it like on the paper it's like 100 percent you it's uh mm-hmm. similar to you know other artists or you know a, of a pen and ink kind of style but you, yours i don't know it stands out it's very dynamic and very much like i said like true to what i think you do which is awesome man um thank you so much what, i really what, appreciate that yeah man what uh what do you primarily use when you're when you're working on something i mean i see the, there's probably paintings behind you but uh, do you do you yeah. kind of start ideas like pen and ink or what do you do? 
Yeah, I do a lot of, um, I do both uh, pen and ink drawings often, and been using a lot of markers lately. Been really enjoying Copic markers, doing more color stuff. Um, and painting all the time. I use acrylics mostly. Mm -hmm. um, started painting skateboard decks, and then uh, just started doing larger pieces too. So, so that mostly, yeah, mostly ink. So those, like the most recent stuff that you've posted on Instagram, that's actually marker that you're using on those. I, dude, it looks like airbrush the way that you're able, the way that you're using uh, it. I love airbrush work. I've never messed with airbrush uh, yet, so I just have always kind of been approximating that style since I was a little kid in my artwork. It just uh, pastels or whatever, whatever can give me that kind of feel. So I love that style. Dude, when we um, were going, when he immediately went, started going into like pencil drawing and style, I my brain immediately went to airbrush because I thought that's what it was. I was getting gearing up to have this whole airbrush conversation because it looks <laughs> like it just has that the fade, like the co the color change. It's it's great, and to find out that's done with like marker, that takes a, a light touch, bro. Yeah, yeah. I work on the pieces for a while. I'm very, it's it's like meditation for me. I love working on them. Uh, you know, I don't rush anything. I just uh, take my time with it. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, airbrushing, it's definitely a touchstone of my, uh, you know, early influence. Walking through the mall as a kid and seeing the airbrush uh, t-shirt shop. Mm, definitely. You know, it was kind of, kind of mind-bending at the time. So I'll get into it one day. I just don't have the space for it right now. It's, uh, it's hey, uh, hard to do it in an apartment. I've told many <laughs> artists that we have on here, like, don't you don't need to change anything you're doing right now like if you get to a place where that works good good for you but what you're doing works man and it does it looks good the Thank style you. is fun like i like how it's bubbly kind of you know it's like bigger than life kind of in, inflated looking if you will and and yeah. we i have an affinity for like verbiage and wording on pages too. just kind of growing up with matt that he that's his style he likes to have phrasing and wording on stuff and so the uh -huh. way you incorporate it too with not just having the word that makes sense, but also the way that you, you know, d design it or how, it, you know, whatever you want to say, it, it fits. I, it's a good style, man. How, how did you kind of cr come up with this particular or what made you decide like, all right, this is the way I'm going to do it? Just chasing down what I like. Um, like I said, the markers is just trying to get a certain aesthetic that I enjoy. Um, and that's the, the way I've always done it. Uh, you know, I've, things that influence me and that I kind of want to approximate or take ideas from and I'll just find ways to get there. Uh, it's hard to explain, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. That was a, a kind of a loaded yeah. question, but it's just yeah. rad, dude. It really is. It's a good style. Thank you. Yeah, definitely like uh, hugely influenced by the 60s underground comic guys. I think that's like, you know, fairly obvious. Like now you get like Rick Griffin and Crumb and Clay mm -hmm. Wilson and all those guys. Mm -hmm. Um, and that uninhibited style. I think that kind of bubbliness definitely comes from those guys. Sure. And like 90s cartoons, growing up with Ren and Stimpy and stuff like that. Um, just anything, yeah, I found aesthetically pleasing, like early like Japanese video games, really cool art in the 90s, any of that kind of stuff. Uh, it's all in here. And <laughs> I'm just, uh, you know, it's, it's the kind of material I build off of. So I don't usually take direct influence from things. I, my art's pretty subjective. But... Um, in terms of style and ideas, I'm just kind of chasing down what I like. Uh, it's mm -hmm. rad. It, you could definitely tell the uh, like the personal character that you add to it. You know, we've never met before today, but I feel like there's a way that I kind of oh, I now meeting you, it's like oh, now your character and like who you are sh kind of shows through in your art so much more after meeting you. So again, thanks for coming on here. I know uh, you're not yeah, thanks for having me. Not huge on you know showing who you are to everybody so i appreciate you uh, being willing yeah 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 i, I half yeah, was I like started, um good oh i was gonna say i half expected you just to be like in a ski mask yeah and like do the interview that way <laughs> i thought about it i was like do i uh, just throw up some weird visuals or something or do I, it's okay though <laughs> i keep um uh, i'm a music teacher by profession uh professor of music oh dope and so that's that's my that's what i do and so I've always just kind of tried to keep the artwork separate, especially since when I first started out, I was doing some pretty wild, you know, underground comic stuff. Mm -hmm. And it was like, no, nobody needs to know. <laughs> yeah. I'm a little, a little looser with it these days, but, um, uh, yeah, so that's <laughs> damn dude. So you're like full blown creative mind, like music professor, 
you know, successful artist and illustrator, like, damn, you're, you're whole right brain, huh? <laughs> Completely, man. I uh, just love making stuff more than anything in the world. It's, uh, yeah. And, you know, it's, whether it's music, art, you're just building something, the materials are different, but there's a lot of crossover in yeah. process and how it works. There's also a lot of differences, you know, it's not one-to-one -one music and art, but um, I definitely carve out time to work on both. Definitely. And I, I make the uh, the comparison to music and art on here all the time because I, I play music. I couldn't say that I'm a musician at this point, but I play music and I don't do as much like art or like painting as Matt does. But we have the common ground of creativity. You know what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. we kind of, that's definitely where a lot of the artists that we interview and Matt and myself find that common ground. You know well he played music, too, but you know what I'm saying? Those parallels yeah. that come between art and music have, they really help. Uh, I don't know. It's just mesh, a mesh of creative people. You can find that, that common ground together with those two things. So that's rad that you do both of those things professionally, man. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. What, what do you what, guys play? What uh, instruments do you play? Um, I play guitar, but not very well. My first instrument was bass. Um, and my wife plays piano uh she's like she she's smarter than i am she can read music she could do you know the whole nine she was in band in like junior high and stuff high school uh, age but yeah uh, i was always like wanted to be like punk like i was in like punk bands but never in like the school band so uh, a lot yeah. of my learning just came from like printing out blink one a two tabs or you know like yeah. just uh learning a no effect song or like something stupid like oh, yeah. no formal training yeah. a lot of bar chords uh like, yeah. you know a lot of power chords mm -hmm. yeah same yeah. we we played in a band we've talked about it on here Reese just actually last episode with alan uh we played in a band do it live and that's when we like started mostly playing music together and i, I did bass he did guitar and we had a fucking blast with that shit man like uh, there's nothing like going on a tour yeah. with your boys and like going all the way up and down the state it's just fun oh yeah let's go and you guys are in san diego right uh inland empire cool. now i was in san diego for like 15 years and then uh the start of the pandemic me and my wife moved out to the desert uh, a couple hours east of la and um I, me and Jim live about an hour apart. So we come, the studio here is in Redlands, California. It's about an hour east of LA. Uh, okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah. I lived in, um, I went to school in San Diego. Uh, I lived in, where I was at? North Park, Canada, oh, dang, Mesa, small world. Nice. Pacific Beach. Yeah. I yeah, was dude. out there for a while. And we used to, a uh, band I played with, we used to come out every summer to play a friend of ours. There's a festival in Mucadia. Okay. Uh, called Summer Fun on the 101. So, we used to do that every year uh, prior to the pandemic, but it kind of slowed down since then. Where so, uh, Lucadia, California, in a while. Where do they do that uh, festival in Lucadia? At? Where's the? Is it like Lose Records right there, or where do they do it at? Uh, yeah, they used to have shows outside of Lose as part of it. They would do like a few days of shows. There'd be like right in the park in the middle of town is where the main thing went down. Um, yeah, it's fun. It's a great time. It happens every summer. I think it's happening again this year. Nice. Yeah, dude. I um I lived in North Park forever, and I I kind of like. I didn't go to North County as much as I should have, uh, because it is a it's a different vibe, like than uh, you know, like North Park or the beach, uh, PB or OB, oh, yeah, definitely. you know, Lucadia and uh, uh, I don't know, even Carlsbad, and they they have their own little like scene to it. Solana Beach, all those places, you know, it's they're very uh, I don't know, art friendly, surfer friendly, feels a little bit more like a little hippie town than a big city, you know. Um, Definitely. But, um, yeah, I didn't know much about them when I lived out there, but now I, uh, a little more well versed. Right on. Where do, um, you're on the East Coast now? Yep. Right on. When, uh, when'd you move out that way? Uh, where? Uh, when or where? Oh, oh. when? Um, it's, I grew up here. I, uh, moved back after a little bit after college. I was living around New York City after that. Now I'm elsewhere. Gotcha. But, um, yeah. Moved back here for the people. You know, I loved California. Loved it out there. Had a blast. But I uh, couldn't replace all the people I grew up with over here. I wanted to see again. So yeah, right on. Back here. Yeah. What, uh, I was going to ask you, too, what came first? Whether uh, did you start playing music at a young age or were you always drawing? Like, was it just simultaneously? 
Yeah, I, I, uh, I was really into drawing, like, as far as I can remember. I loved it. Um, so it's funny, like, with music, I'm completely uh, educated, I guess. I uh, you know, have a master's degree and I teach it at a high level and always took lessons and all this stuff. With art, it's like the opposite. I'm completely self-taught. Um, aside from, like, I took a few lessons in cartooning with uh, this guy in his garage, like, when I was growing up. <laughs> was local, <laughs> right. local guy had cartooning classes in his garage. It's pretty cool. His wife taught painting and stuff, too, there. They had a little studio. Um, so I would go, I went there a few times just to kind of do some stuff with a friend of mine, but uh, other than that, no formal art training. Couldn't even take art in school or anything because I had too many music classes. So sure. um, I... I was really into art, became obsessed with music when I was uh, pretty young, like middle school age. After that, um, didn't really do much art for a long time, kind of got away from it. I was just totally into the music and uh, doing as much as I possibly could. Um, and it was like a little bit post-college, I just started dabbling in visual art a lot again. I was living with a friend of mine, a phenomenal artist, um, got me inspired. We made like a coloring book together back then. and. Uh, and started another friend of mine was really into making comics. We started doing that together. So it just kind of snowballed um, where, I mean, now, you know, it, it's been a while now, but I can't even imagine not doing it. I'm, you know, working on visual stuff every single day. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, but I did, I, I got away from it for a while. So, but it's kind of like, and now the cool thing about doing both is when I'm away from one, I just gain a ton of inspiration on the other. Oh, if yeah. I'm making, if I'm really in, in an art project that's especially if it's got a deadline and I really can't work on anything else, like I want to make music more than anything in the world. Yeah. yeah. And so when I get back to it, I have all these ideas and I'm super inspired. So I, I kind of find they balance each other out very nicely. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's really hard to be, you know, top, like really good at one thing, let alone two. I'm not saying I'm good at anything, you know, just, uh, just aware that, you know, yeah, yeah. to take on like two, two mediums is not easy. So, um, I do worry about stretching myself thin, but uh, like I said, they just kind of keep each other in balance somehow. Totally. Yeah, I was going to say that like, right as soon as you were done and then you went right into what I was going to say. Like that must be so wild to like kind of be good at both mediums, you know, and have and I've been educated. Being educated in something is is amazing because you know it inside and out the theory and everything that's there to it. And you can utilize those tools, yeah. but then also getting the experience of like self-teaching yourself about art and all that goes along with that with the oh well this didn't come out the way i wanted it to or oh this didn't get the response that i thought it would and all of these things having to learn pull yourself up by the bootstraps without those educational tools like having both of those paths i'm jealous bro that you <laughs> like that you can not only go <laughs> walk those paths but can uphold both like so many times i wish that i could just dive like my my habit or my uh outlet of music is not doing it right now and so i wish there was another outlet that i was good at that i could dive into like you're saying you know as you're saying yeah. oh i, I cr get creative from one thing when i'm diving into this i i have so much inspiration on the other I, that hit me so, like so like dang i wish i had that <laughs> and, and it feels great it really does it's a it's a nice balance it's a good way to to live i enjoy it hell yeah yeah man, man. You're blessed you always get to be working on something creating something i feel like a, a lot of my creativity uh if i try to work on something daily if i have a, a routine it helps me get things done but it doesn't necessarily help me be my most creative self mm -hmm. i feel like i get bursts mm -hmm. of uh bursts of like energy or bursts of uh ambition or whatever you want to call it just drive passion and then that's when i'll make a few pieces at a time that i actually am happy about making um whereas working on something uh -huh. every day I, I i tend to put it away and like not pick it up for months you know or like weeks um is it it's weird it kind of like burn your you can burn yourself out really quickly um becomes but, a task yeah but it is also the most efficient way to get anything done is to yeah. chip away at it and do a little every day you know mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. do you ever find yeah. that um you don't want to do like either, like you're just like, fuck, I got to teach music. I'm burnt out on like this painting. It's you're always like stoked to do it. Never. Yeah, never. I just, there's not enough time in a day. Nice. Just, Dude, that's there's so, so right. many projects I want to work on. Yeah. Whether it's like, you know, finishing up a comic book or a painting or an album, there's always something to do. Yeah. So do you take a lot of commissions? 
Um, a decent amount. I just did some album artwork for uh, for some friends of mine. That was fun. Um, yeah, it comes and goes, and it's random. You mm-hmm. know, just uh, again the uh, the randomness of meeting people online and all, all through Instagram, really. Like I, you know, I, like I said, very social media diverse. Have you know, I, I teach their own. I don't get it. You know, for using it for like personal life and stuff like that. But you know, if it makes you happy. But for me, no way. And uh, yeah. <laughs> so I was reluctant to use it. But um, like I said, it's been awesome. I had so many opportunities and met so many people I wouldn't have otherwise. So. Definitely. I oh, mean, yeah. we know that feeling. We were talking about it before we started recording. Like this this has opened up avenues to not only meet artists, but meet cool people. You know what I mean? And and yeah. just for instance, like this, we, we never would have been able to me or I probably wouldn't have been exposed to your art had you not been involved with rat nest. And like, it just, it, it is a really huge bridge right now, uh, f- between artists and like allowing artists to me and them collaborate. And it's, it's just awesome, man. We couldn't have asked for it to yeah. turn out better. Awesome. Cool. The fact that you guys, even want to talk to me is very, uh, <laughs> it's an honor. I we do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like it's surprising, you know, it's just, now, you know, cool. I mean, it's, it's interesting cause every artist has a lot of similarities and, in certain things I feel like, but then also, uh, every, everyone's unique to themselves and, uh, has, has a different idea of what they want to do with their art, how they want to present their art, how they make their art. Um, Mm -hmm. so when I see something like yours, I, I, I mean, it's very, it, it caught my eye right away. I was like very into it. And then, uh, when, you know, we put in the zine together, I was like, I have to have to ask him to do a page and you were nice enough to be like, yeah, I got you. Like, what do you want? You want to, yeah, you know, pin yeah. up. You want a, a comic? Like I got, I got it all. I was like, "Fuck, dude, whatever you want to contribute, yeah. that's awesome." Thank you, man. No, no problem. Yeah, try to uh, try to say yes to stuff. You know, like that. Definitely, uh, it's good. No, it was cool. I'm glad you did. It, yeah, it's funny how. Uh, uh, it, it's funny how the ability to just now reach out and just say like, "Hey, do you want to do something?" And it, it's not like it used to be yeah. where you had to know somebody who knew an artist that you could get in touch with because I need to get my album cover done or I'm trying to put a zine together. It's like, yo, I just have this massive multimedia and I can go on and look through and be like, I like this, reach out, you wanna be involved in this. Not knowing each other, not having past relationships or even having yeah. like six degrees of separation, you're still able to get involved with this. And when, I guess to me, it, it's changing the way that I look at my social media, especially now it's flooded with artists that we've interviewed and flooded with so much more like talent. You know what I mean? And as I scroll, I'm like, yeah. Oh, we got to get this guy on or Oh, we got to re-interview this. Like I start to see w- what I like about art. You know what I mean? Rather than, Oh, this person does good art. And I know this name it's, it's becoming more, I see what I like in art. And I, that's, those are the people that we reach out to, you know, we're kind of, selfish in the fact that we're interviewing who we want to interview you know that's really the only control out of it that we have is hey let's find people and let's just hit them up and talk to who we want to talk to because i bet you other people want to hear from them too so it's it's yeah, like an no, awesome that's, that's the only way you can do it that's great yeah and it it gives us opportunities well. to sit down with like cool ass people it's, it's just really cool <laughs> awesome you were saying uh earlier you mentioned like you started painting decks and then bigger work after that did you did you grow up skateboarding at all? Did you have that kind of like outlet as well? Not really, a little bit. I, I mean, I used to rollerblade more than skateboard. Actually, I had a cousin who was a big skateboarder. We used to go to you know quarter pipes, half pipes, and dick around stuff like that. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, just just having fun, longboarding around. I got my first week. I lived in California. I got a ticket for skateboarding on campus, oh, which was. A real bummer, man. We were so poor at the time, too. Like, the last thing I needed. I was just trying to get to class. Yeah, totally. That's such a whack-ass rule. Like, I can't believe that (laughs) they ticket kids for skating, like, to class. It's not even, it's not like you're messing property up, you know? No, it was like a Friday. There was nobody on campus, either. Yeah, that's wild. wild. Yeah, welcome Uh, to California. Yeah, dude. um, California, yeah. <laughs> we have so many skate parks, especially San Diego. Like every little neighborhood has a skate park, so they're really serious about ticketing. It's it's stupid. Mm-hmm. It's insane. I don't know how many yeah. times I had to run from the cops when I was a kid, uh, from you know skating at elementary schools or whatever. Like it's so wild. Do you guys skate? Like I, at the moment, you got a bunch of nice boards behind you. Yeah, I, um, yeah. I still skate. I'm I just do like old man skating mm-hmm. now, where it's like. 
20 minutes at the park and I'm winded and I'm done. Uh, but yeah, yeah, it's still awesome, man. There's something, there's something about skateboarding to me that is, um, uh, kind of unlike any other outlet in the sense that you work, it's like uh, getting something just right. Like you work and you work and you work at it and you practice and you meditate on it and you try it a million times and it doesn't work out. But then that one time you land it and right away clean, there's a, it's, it's almost like you're chasing that feeling constantly. Um, yeah. I think it lends itself for that reason to have like a lot of really good skateboarders become really like fucked up and addictive personalities because they're that, that feeling is so fleeting. It's like on to the next thing. Like it's really uh-huh. weird, but, um, in a way, I don't know. It's kind of, kind of goes hand in hand with like artistry. I think like a lot of skateboarding is very similar to making art. Yeah. Yeah. One of the, the things I think about it's, uh, it was anything athletic. Um, the fact that you'll kind of hit a point in your life where that's going to taper off and yeah. not do it anymore. It's gotta be a real mind fuck. Yeah. You know, but it's like, you know, hopefully with our you know artistic endeavor you can just keep getting better and better there shouldn't be too many physical barriers but uh with sport that's tough yeah yeah definitely i mean you could do art your whole life and then tell the arthritis catches up with you and you literally can't yeah. hold the brush anymore or whatever like you can get a lot of years out of it man i mean look at all the amazing illustrators especially like you're mentioning the guys from like the underground scene in the 70s it's like they're old as shit now and they're still making awesome art just the kind of this, a lot of the yeah. same style that they were doing 40 years ago or whatever you know it's wild yeah in fact it gets refined into something really special most of the time if they keep going like the rare people who can keep going then you're on a whole another level like most people can't even relate to yeah you know yeah. like the kind of stuff crumb does now i don't know if you see like any of his drawings they're just gorgeous he just does like realistic drawings now right it's just like <laughs> Yeah, it, it yeah, is insane. Incredible. It's just like honing. They're so idiosyncratic, you know, like mm-hmm. nobody else could make what he's making. Right. right. And it, so yeah. it has like it kind of goes back to what we were saying about your work, where it's like it's stamped like with your style. You know, yeah. it's um, I re- yeah, I really appreciate that. That's like the nicest thing to hear that. I, like my art, like style, style is like everything. Like you could be a great technical artist, but. You know, nobody needs like a perfect landscape painting, I suppose. You know, yeah, it's like, yeah. Right. You, yeah, it's like how, and Francis Bacon always talked about it, it's like life, the artist, you're filtering the world through your nervous system, like your particular experience, right? And it's like what comes out, that's what's interesting. That's why he was all about figurative art and uh, just, you know, his his take on it. And I love that's, that's my kind of stuff. As a, as a professor, like since your, your job is, music and like that's like a huge focus and part of your life do you do you have that drive to like sell work and show work are you like constantly looking for places to hang or are you just kind of like creating to create it for yourself yeah definitely making for myself mostly and then just trying to find opportunities that fit like i've never um like i really like fame does not seem appealing You know, (laughs) but like getting notoriety for your work, that's fine. You know, that that seems cool. Like that makes me happy. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. uh, You know, so I'm not like chasing anything where I'm trying to like always look for opportunities. But um, I I guess in a way I am. But opportunities that fit with stuff I'm comfortable with. I never, you know, have no interest in doing commercial work or having to like change my art for anybody or do anything I'm not comfortable with. Yeah. So I don't even worry about that. But if opportunities come up that don't you know, offend my sensibilities or like, this is, or like working with you guys, you guys clearly have cool taste in artwork and the stuff you curate and put out. That's why I was like, Oh, I'd love to do something with these guys. Let me, you know, hit them up and see if they're interested. Hell yeah. Um, or like, like Cameron doing uh, cluster fucks, right. You know, yes. Yeah. We're all into a lot of the same stuff. So it's like, okay, this fits like, let's chase this uh, down and see if something happens. But, yeah. Um, oh yeah. Well, yeah, but that's, that's about it. You know, if, if stuff crosses my radar, so I'm always looking for new things to do uh, and try out. But um, yeah, I'm not uh, not looking to go outside of my do, my lane too much. For, forgive me for asking, because I I should know this, but uh, did you do issues of Clusterfucks? Are you in those? Uh, the newest one. Four. The newest one. Okay, right on. Yep. Yeah. Dude, that I'm mentality that you were just to... talking about right now of like, well, I I'm just gonna do what like I'll look for opportunity, but I'll do, use the opportunities that I'm comfortable with. Like rather than feeling that need to like, 
oh, well, my success is always driving forward. I have to be pushing forward in order to be successful. Like the artists yeah. that you were, we were just talking about a minute ago, like Crumb, the reason they're able to go through it is because either A, they were able to avoid selling out or, or you know, co uh, compromising their self for, to get paid or for the work that they put out, or B, they went through that and were able to weather that storm and learn from it and go, oh, that ain't what I want to do. Because that, those types yeah. of situations, when you let yourself go outside of the boundaries that you set for yourself, that's when it'll start weighing on you. That's when it'll make it impossible for you to finish a task or you won't want to create anymore. And that's what kills an artist is when they go, oh, in order to be successful, I have to do X, Y, and Z, even though I don't agree with Z and Y, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, and yeah. it's, it's so the way that you put that, like, I'm only looking for opportunities that I'm comfortable with is, is a perfect mentality that I, I wish more artists would be able to adopt because then they would, it will make you grow rhino skin, right? It'll make you just go, it, everything's gonna bounce off my back. I don't care if you like it or you don't like it, or I don't care if that opportunity is the best for my career or not. Like, I'm doing what I care about inside and all this shit's just gonna bounce off me. Yeah, totally. And, uh, you know, it can be tough because it, it can get to be a real slog, you know? You, you could be spending a long time just not, you know, it's like, what's happening? Like, <laughs> what is going on? Yeah. Nothing, not much, but, uh, you know, if you're, happy with what you're making that's not really the problem and if it's, you uh, and if you go into it knowing it's a lifelong journey you're on it's not like oh i'm going into this to be famous and i need to get there in five years that time that it takes is no big deal because you wake up 10 years later and you go holy shit i've been doing art for 10 years and look at the change like look at the difference like and now oh i am successful and it's all those like incremental upgrades that get you closer and closer to selling out or to doing the thing you don't want to do uh ah uh, yeah it's it's wild to to talk to so many artists and hear so many different perspectives on how they look at that and the you know how they're able to sustain and so i i just sorry i didn't mean to go off on a tangent there but that was just one of the no, best ways that i've heard it put Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah. It's um, yeah. It's it can be an uneasy dance too. You know, sometimes there's opportunities. You're like, should I do this? Is this kind of putting myself out there too much? And it could be a good thing because you know, if you don't make yourself uncomfortable every once in a while, there's not gonna be any growth. For sure. Yeah. Totally. So, uh, so it's it's tough, but yeah, just gotta make those decisions. I know, like, uh, I was watching your podcast with uh, you guys had Tallboy on. His artwork is sick. Sick. And he was talking about uh, working for a, a company where it was a little more commercial and how he just had to get out of there. Yeah. So, yeah, he uh, was um dude, he's one of my he's a friend of a friend that he used to live in San Diego as well for a couple of years. So I met him way back in the day and I was I've followed kind of his journey throughout the last seven or eight years. And uh he's he's done so many big projects and had like pretty big I mean for for what it is, lack of a better term, like good success with it. And he's yeah. killed corporate jobs, like he's Every project he takes on, he rules at. Uh, now he's doing huge murals. Like it, it's, it's crazy to see him excel at so many different things and still keep kind of true to his aesthetic. And he he doesn't say yes to everything. He's you yeah. know he's not he didn't stick around at that corporate spot even because he was unhappy. You know, it, and that's really refreshing to see people making yeah. those choices. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And that success is just an outgrowth. He's just been doing his thing for so long. You yeah, know, people recognize it. Yeah. Yeah. He, I it, think I grabbed like a copy of Nightwatch at Desert Island Comics in Brooklyn like years ago. That's his zine, right? Yeah. That's what he does. Yeah. That was the first time I saw his stuff. It was awesome. Yeah, yeah, man. That was, so, yeah, he's been going for a while. That was, that, that was a fun little run they did there. I think they did like 13 issues with that. Um, uh huh. And he was like, yeah, we just got busy with other stuff. And, you know, that kind of had to take the, the back burner. Like they're happy with what they did. Um, and so they just kind of left it at that. Um, which I don't know what I'm yeah. doing. Like, I don't know why I made the scene. Someone asked me like, what? So why'd you put a zine together? I was like, I really don't fucking know, man. Like it, it just seemed like the right thing to do. Uh, like I, it's cool exactly, because yeah. the cross contamination of everyone's artwork. Right. So the, the, the exposure for the other 29 artists, um, because you, you're, you give one to your friend that knows your artwork. So you, you get to check out so much different stuff, which I thought, I think that's like a really cool platform and like a really w cool way to like uh, put something out is like a, a group show. It's like curating a group show, really. 
Yeah, absolutely. Are you going to do another one? Is that the plan? Yeah, yeah. I think issue two, I for whatever reason, I put summer 2022 on this one, I think. Uh, so I, I guess I'm going to do it seasonally. It'll either be yeah. fall or maybe winter. Maybe I'll just do two this year and try to do four next year. Um, but that gives me a you know a good three months to work on it and kind of line up the next uh, group of artists and uh, see what's happening. I don't really know if I'm going to reach out to everyone, every issue uh, to give them an opportunity if yeah. they want to submit or if I'm going to try to switch it up um, or if I'm going to do interviews again or I, I don't know, man. This was all just the first time thing, kind of figuring it out as I go. It's like I've made zines for myself and stuff, but never, never on this level of like. 30 artists that you know encompass this thing yeah that's a lot yeah yeah I, a little over ambitious <laughs> if i must say yeah. so myself uh, but yeah man it, it's funny it's um it's it's fun for me like at the end of the day to get something physical copies you put it together or you helped create it and you know um it's kind of my taste like you know it's got it's got my thumbprint on it since i'm the one that put it together and did the couple interviews or whatever um so it yeah. is rewarding in that sense but it it is it's like herding cats you know working with artists it's like hitting everyone up and then i'm forgetting <laughs> stuff i'm losing emails yeah. i'm having to ask people for stuff again or whatever it, it gets pretty hectic pretty quick yeah i can only imagine yeah, probably, yeah. <laughs> so if you want to take <laughs> over as the editor in issue two you let yeah. me know dude we got it <laughs> I thought about, you know, trying to put together like a comics anthology because there's so many great artists that like, you know, I can talk yeah. to regularly, but yeah, it's, uh, not, not looking to take that on at the moment. So, <laughs> yeah. it's, uh, so I'm so glad that people do it. <laughs> like you yeah. and Cameron, like that, like yeah. actually want to do that. That's fantastic. I, I think it's the best. I love people who are just, you know, fans enough to do stuff like that. It's, uh, it's so heartening. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. Cam is like the ultimate, like, fanboy of all things comics and like yeah. art movies comics uh you know graphic novels manga like he gets dude, it, dude he knows cares, it all yeah. he cares about it all he like yeah. he really loves that shit i love art like 100 uh -huh. percent. i love art with everything that i am but i i can't say that i have like the focus on comics um uh, like other people do i i fuck around in yeah, that realm yeah. but you know mm -hmm. people you know, that's, that's their whole heart, you know, mm -hmm. did, totally, yeah. did you, so uh, were you a comic comics. kid? Did you like read comic books and stuff when you were young? Not really. Um, I always enjoyed the art and I had a bunch of like, uh, I love the spawn comics when I was a kid, Tom McFarlane's art is sick. Yeah. Uh, I had a bunch of like Ren and Stimpy comics from back then and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Uh, just stuff I appreciated the art for, uh, form, but, uh, I didn't, you know, I wasn't reading comics all the time. It wasn't until I got into the the underground stuff that I started, you know, actually reading through them. And, you know, like behind me over here, I have like almost the entire complete Crumb series. I don't know if you've ever seen those books. There's like a bunch of volumes of those. Yeah. Collects everything. Yeah. So at this point, I've been through a lot of that kind of stuff. But, you know, superhero stuff, you know, not for me. Yeah. Uh, never really enjoyed that kind of stuff. But, you know, whatever. Um yeah, mostly like kind of like what you're saying. Never a huge comic guy per se, but I do really enjoy making comics. It's fun to write a story, and to oh, yeah, uh, you know, I just try to make silly, fun stories too when I do it. I'm not trying to uh, you know send a message to anybody. Not make a yeah. point. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, I just try to have some fun. Yeah, yeah. That's that's what it is, man. I mean, for me especially when I'm painting, it's usually in the moment. I don't really map out. I don't do a sketch before and say this is how I'm gonna paint this or this is the the realm it's going to live in i just kind of start going and and find stuff i like about it and try to pull those shapes out better like you know uh build layer and layer and layer and and see what happens and a lot of it like jim was saying i'll, I'll be watching tv or listening to the radio or something in the background and a lot of the times mm -hmm. if something just sounds funny to me like it ends up on the painting it, you know it, there's a yeah. lot of just that weird uh i don't even know what you would call it just like Hand, not hand to mouth or whatever, but like a free flow of consciousness, flow yeah, of consciousness kind yeah. of thing. You know, it's just yeah. you're in you're in it right then, and it might not make sense to you even later, but that's what it what it was in the moment. Oh, hundred percent. Yeah, that's where the style comes from. You know, so like what what you put into yourself in terms of like what media you consume and what you you know if you read and stuff like that, it's gonna it's gonna be in there. Yeah. So that's why I like. 
and yeah, like making a comic, I never feel like I want to make, like send a message with it, but my personality and my views are going to be in there just by the, you know, virtue of it. Because it's you, yeah. right. And put together. Yeah, yeah. So that's, uh, I like seeing that rather than being like preached to. But. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Well, I yeah. think one of the, what I like. Things, of, God, place. I think what I like about seeing wording and verbiage on a painting or whatever is like Matt saying, he's just sitting there and it's a random phrase from a podcast and he throws it on there. But then all of a sudden it forces my brain to make a connection between what I'm looking at and the words and what they mean. And it's like, it may be completely unintentional, the, the connection that I draw myself and everyone has the opportunity to draw a different connection. But I think that's why I like it. It's almost like choose your own ending, uh, like in thought, you know, it's, yeah. well, here's the imagery, but then this phrase m completely changes the way that I'm looking at this now. You know, it, it, I, I like that part oh, a lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, right. Like the yeah, any like illustrations, even with or without words, it's like there's information in that, and it's gonna play in your brain, the the, the you know yeah. the recipient's brain. However, it's gonna play, right? So and just give it like you cool to work with. Yeah, and just like you said, um, like as the artist, what you intake is going to influence what you're creating, like. And when you create that art now the way that the person takes that art in is going to influence their decisions and their life in a different way you know what i mean yeah. so when the care is taken on one end or the other or the opportunity to make a different connection from from something than you may have taken before you can literally change somebody's path or change the way that they look at things just based on an image that you created and that is like so oh, yeah. powerful to me absolutely that's like, uh, are you guys into Clay Wilson? Do you know him? Yeah, I know. I know of him. I haven't, I'm not like deep into his work, but I've, I've seen his work. Yeah. Oh, so good. But he was the guy who crumb saw his stuff and he's like, oh, you could just, you know, draw your id on the page and just yeah. put whatever the hell you want there. And his art completely changed after that. But, you know, sometimes you need someone to show you that you could do it. Yeah. To, uh, you know, for the thought to even cross your mind. So mm -hmm. that's why, you know, taking in lots of great art and all that kind of stuff, it all just it feeds the process. Are, so. you, are you a fan of um, like old masters? Like, do you do you get down at like a, a art museum? Like you can appreciate a, an, an, oh, a so Renaissance right. painting, or, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Love, uh, love like Renaissance and Baroque art for sure. Um, beautiful stuff. And, yeah. And music as well. I love uh, classical music and, yeah. uh, and Baroque music, stuff like that. Hell yeah. So yeah, definitely have an appreciation for it. People were doing amazing stuff uh, yeah. early on. And uh, it's, it's just, whatever the art, the art form is, it's just like you have materials that you're going to build something with. It's like, what do you do with them? So whether it's a person 300 years ago making something or now, I'm just curious to see what people are up to. Hell yeah. And there's so many ideas to draw from that. I, I love going to museums. Um, you know, I think like as a kid, Van Gogh and Picasso stuff, like that's trippy stuff. And some of the seeing that early on was like, well, like, what is this? Mm -hmm. Like you can do this, you know, again, it's like, you know, don't just give me a painting of some flowers, but it's like filtered through this like really interesting person and yeah. then it comes out, you know, the way it does. It's like, well, this is, this is great. Yeah. I mean, that's, uh, yeah, definitely. That's, a, that's the craziest shit. Like, cause everyone knows Pablo Picasso and is probably familiar with some of his paintings. But the idea of being such a good artist or the sense of no, it, it's like knowing the rules so you can break them. Right. It's like mm -hmm. you he, he went to school to define what art could be. It was like, yeah, I know what this should be. I know how to paint like that, but I'm going to completely deconstruct mm -hmm. and do something that is like mind boggling. And the same with like, you know, all the yeah. all those surrealist paintings and stuff. Uh, it's just it's it's crazy to me to think. Like if I went to school for for painting or, or if I would have finished school for art, let's put it that way, um, I would love to render perfect portraits. Like I, it's yeah. a skill I don't have. I would love to do that. And to think that I would get to that level where I could do it and then be like, nah, fuck that. I'm not going to do it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it, it's it's yeah. crazy. It, it's it's pretty, pretty punk rock, I guess. I don't know. The guys, yeah. I mean, I heard no. Picasso was an asshole, but I don't want to give him too much yeah. cred, but you know, <laughs> it's nuts. I don't think you make that much stuff without being an asshole to like the people <laughs> right. in your life personally, like, right. uh, like a bad dad or whatever. But, um, yeah, no, I agree a hundred percent. Yeah. I, like always in the background working on like, all right, gotta get better at portraiture, landscapes, realistic stuff, all this stuff. Cause it's like, it, they just become tools, right. Mm -hmm. For the, and 
the stuff that you want to make afterwards. I think it's, you know, the more of that stuff you have to work with, the better off you are. I don't Absolutely. see it. You know, Do some people might say it's a hindrance, but I, I don't see it that way. I like to learn as much as possible. When you're, so. when you're, um, making art or when you're, how I should say, how do you learn? Like, are you a visual learner when it comes to art? If you see someone do something or if you learn a technique, you can take that with you or, or it, can you read something and figure it out? Like how, how is, how do you learn? A little bit of both. Uh, I do love to read. So, you know, I've like, once I started doing a lot of shading and stuff in my drawings, I was like, let me you know, just grab a book about shading and see what's up with it. I might like browse through it and look at stuff, mostly just through looking at other people's work and trying to like, you know, figure out what they're doing just try it out myself right it's like um, i like that I thing you're doing i'm sorry i was saying it's like you could watch someone's work or like look at someone's work and be like i really like this part of it like how do i do that yeah exactly and then um a lot of times like the you know, one of the reasons my art looks i guess kind of uh different than, than some other stuff is because nobody taught me how to do a lot of these techniques so i just you know kind of do it on my own and it comes out different but mm -hmm. then i work on it enough that it's interesting and then it becomes my own thing yeah um like i use a lot of stippling in my work um and really none of my early influences before i started doing that were stippling artists um mm -hmm. so that was completely just like i just kind of stumbled upon it as a way to to do shading the way i liked and uh kind of give shape to stuff and then just kept doing it uh since then i've seen you know more and more artists who use it but uh mm -hmm. i was really trying to you know like crumbs hatching was like a huge influence on me so I messed around with that a lot, but I ultimately didn't adopt that. I didn't want to like, you know, be biting a style or anything. I just kind of went my own direction. Yeah. Um, but you know, it's all, it's all just information that you could work with, you know, whether it's uh, reading a book or looking at a piece of art. Um, that's all, it's all giving you information if your mind's open to it. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I mean, I went to school and I wasn't a great student. Uh, I think partially because I was 19 and I just had started drinking and smoking pot you know what i mean so i didn't have a lot of ambition to go to class and like want to be there but also yeah there wasn't in in the couple years i was in art school um a lot of my teachers were pretty boring a lot of it was like yeah. very like uninteresting to me just very straight read from the book kind of uh classes and uh -huh. um the couple of professors that were working artists that I actually got to see work. I, I think I took a lot more uh, from watching someone do something than I ever did writing an essay about someone from the past or whatever, you know? Oh, totally. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, I, I think I'm just easy. very visual when it comes to that. Like I have to see it to like know how to do it. It's weird. Yeah. Yeah. And the academic stuff could get ridiculous. Like I, I read academic journals for music all the time. Some of them are interesting, but some of it is just so esoteric that it's like, I don't know who this is for. Yeah. <laughs> like if this is useful for anybody, like it's not going to inspire anybody right. most likely. So there's a lot of stuff like that in academia, but there's also great stuff. Like some of the best stuff comes from the academic world and some just terrible stuff does too. So yeah, absolutely. How, <laughs> how much would you say, having the the academic i know we touched on this earlier but how much would you say having the academic side of music was able to either give you extra tools or or help you or hinder you when as you're creating art learning from the ground up you know were you able to take kind of that that musical background and apply it and or and what did that help or hinder a hundred percent oh it helps i think it all like lear just learning more i think only helps no matter what sure, you're learning yeah. about yeah, yeah, I try to, and I know people make the argument counter, and that's that's fine. You know, maybe it is that way for somebody, but for me, not at all. Um, the so, I mean, you know, whether you're making a painting or composing a piece of music, like I said before, you're just taking the materials you have to work with, and you're going to try to make something cool with them. So there's certain principles that carry over, whether it's like you know, balance, composition, mm, yeah. like these are intrinsic to a film, mm -hmm. piece of art. You know, painting, yeah. drawing, piece of music, like it's all there. So you kind of learn, um, you know, and like, uh, so I, I write music all the time. I love writing music, big composer, but I didn't want to go to school for composition. I went for uh, music theory. Okay. Because um, I just figured here's a way I could look, you know, you gain the tools to analyze music and really know what's going on. And that lets you just look at, all the history of music, all the stuff you listen to, then you can kind of break it down and figure out oh, what's this person doing? Like, how are they using the 12 notes that we have? Mm -hmm. What's this person up to? Like, how is, you know, how is uh, jazz and classical different from one another? Why is like romantic music different from Baroque music? And 
they sound different, right? But you could get to a, a technical level where you understand uh, why they are on a technical level different. And once you understand that, if you're a composer, then you can use those tools. Yeah. You know, uh, so that that's the way I always kind of saw it. So if you could break down what a person's doing, kind of understand it on a technical level, it becomes a tool that you can use in your own work. So that that's why I really enjoy studying uh, what everybody's up to. So. Yeah, that's right. When you yeah, you mentioned earlier about just like a lot of layers and like spending time on pieces. And I feel like that's basically hand in hand with like, if you're a producer, you know, where do you start with the backbone of the beat and you build off of it and you grow it and, totally. you know, you add and yeah. add and add until you find that, that happy place. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 It could be a pop song that you're, you know, working to create, you know, take your elements, balance them, make something good. It's got some shape to it. It's got yeah. an arc composition, right? Doesn't, doesn't matter. Those certain things are intrinsic to like any good piece of art. Yeah. Um, it's anything that, creative yeah. composition yeah yeah there's something there that that's the through line you know art and music aren't a one-to-one -one comparison but there is a through line in terms of like what makes things satisfying to our brains yeah and, uh, you know why they work yeah we were talking about so, me and jim were talking about food uh this morning and just kind of that idea is like in the yeah. essence of it you know they say it's what it's salt acid fat or whatever there's like a few components that make something good by a physiological standard like a weird yeah. standard that yeah. you know for most people mm -hmm. this is satisfying yeah it's, it's yeah. funny to see just like the commonality of art and music and all these things it's like people can find that balance there's like a balance to everything and if you can hit that right note or you know it, it harmonize uh you know you got a nice three-part harmony going on it's it's beautiful you know yeah. it's it's yeah. like naturally yeah. like almost like um primally yeah like acceptable yeah yeah it's very satisfying right mm -hmm. that's uh and that you know that whole thing is very mysterious and like you can learn more about it but it's like you're never going to get to the bottom of it right. in a right. lifetime you know no matter how much you study and that's what i love about it that's what like when i was young and i realized that about music that like oh, i could study this my whole life and i'm never gonna like know everything there is to know that's what intrigued me and that's where i took off and was just like i'm you know this is what i'm doing now <laughs> this is it yeah yeah, yeah. that's awesome and, and not yeah. to mention it goes back to what you said earlier like it comes down to who it's filtered through right you could learn the exact yep. same thing as another student right next to you but they're going to create a completely different style of music or a completely different painting based on the same information that they had that you got yeah. but it's filtered yeah. through that person and that's what kind of creates the the uniquity of it or the the reason that it's so drawing you know what i mean someone else that's yeah. why reproductions of paintings those artists are just as talented to sit there and be able to recreate a perfect you know renaissance piece and sell it as a yeah. fake but they would you know they'd rather not take the the leap of putting themselves out there you know what i'm saying they have the talent but they have to create yeah. something else because you need that within you it's like a cover band yeah totally <laughs> It's like, that's funny oh yeah <laughs> yeah yeah cover bands are huge now they're like like you go see live music around the the area man it's like all cover bands which is <laughs> yeah. it's like, there used to be so many bands playing but yeah it's like if you want to you know i don't think that's a good sign that yeah <laughs> the exactly the only music live music that these you know bars and clubs could get away with having right now is stuff people knows already you know it seems kind of uh worrying it's, but, it's uh, but that's the way it is it's funny too because in the i guess in the current scene that we're involved in there's a lot of uh like the bootleg comic culture um which is you know essentially playing off someone else's idea but it is yeah. always like knowing that purposely doing the bootleg thing and making it like purposely sketchy or like purpose, like not well done. Like, I don't know. It, it is still its own thing. Even though you're copying yeah. maybe a character or something. Yeah. It, it, it's weird. Uh, <laughs> it's a weird dynamic. I don't know. It's interesting to, to see how popular it's become to like rip shit off. Yeah. Yeah. That's really interesting. Yeah. Nothing against that. I don't do it myself, but yeah, like there's, I mean, just look for like Bart Simpson stuff on, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. on Instagram, right? Bo there's bootleg like Bart Simpson. Yeah, yeah, which is great, you know, it's, it's fun seeing people do that. I mean, just, we're so inundated with, with info and, and images and all that stuff, it makes sense that people are going to just start repurposing it. And yeah, for sure. Fun stuff with it. Yeah. And I think yeah. there's a, a part, probably, you know, go ahead. No, the same people do that in music now, too, you have like, I mean, it's been 
going on for a while, but like it's just kind of feeding on itself with like mashups and remixes mm -hmm. and just like versions and and slowed down versions of stuff. It's uh yeah, people are just playing around with that right now. That's I think cool. with, yeah. with pop music too, like currently, it's it's kind of taken a funny turn because there's always been sampling and and um, you know like repurposing songs, but now it's not even repurposing or resampling it's just using the same right. sample and backbeat as a song from 15 yeah. years ago i'm gonna rewrite this song as mine yeah. like no that's not how the music works it yeah, yeah seems a little odd people get in trouble for that now because it's so uh so popular yeah it pushed a little far yeah uh, yeah it's pretty sad i mean like modern pop music there's a lot of great music being made right now but like modern pop like you think in terms of melody harmony rhythm lyrical content like it is all way worse than it was <laughs> yeah. like, in, like, like provably like there's just less information in there yeah. it's like you know in terms of harmonies and, and all this stuff like as as musician it's just like uh it's very obvious that the it, compared to like what was on the charts in the 1970s yeah. or even the 80s and mm -hmm. it's like this is low information music it's just mm -hmm. not very smart it's not very stimulating um, you yeah. can almost feel it though that there's like no soul in it. Like it's it it yeah. seems like not empty but cold. I guess like it just doesn't seem yeah. like very endearing. Like when I turn on the radio, I'm never stoked to hear a song. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's devoid of like ideas and life and kind of like inspiration. It's. Uh, <laughs> it's <laughs> well, uh, yeah, it's, I have a lot of um, younger uh, music students too. I just teach uh, music privately as well, like guitar and piano lessons and stuff like that. Um, and growing up, we always had, uh, there was always a music scene around. There's always bands playing, people renting out VFW halls and like, uh, you know, local centers to do mm -hmm. shows, uh, even playing at bars when we were in high school and stuff. And now when I have a, a like a teenage music student, they can't even find other people to, to play with to start a band. Wow. So it's like, yeah, so this is definitely a noticeable difference um, in just like a 15 year period or so. Um, man, I feel bad for him. You know, yeah, the scenes yeah. are where the cool stuff happens. That's where you have this cross pollination of ideas. People get competitive and they make each other better. Mm -hmm. Um, so, but you know, now, you know, a lot of, now, they learn from the internet a lot now, which is pretty cool. I mean, you can learn a lot through YouTube pretty quickly on your own, but it's still in isolation. So mm -hmm. whether, you know, you might get some good technique on your instrument from watching some videos, but you're not like coming up with ideas with other people and, uh, and doing stuff like that. So, it, I mean, so that's definitely been a difference it's it's like the equivalent of like a small town square back like i'm talking you know way back in the day where it was like that was the center where everyone came together exchanged ideas uh you know would learn from each other um but now you don't have to because the internet's at your fingertips and every piece of information you could ever want whether it's true or false uh you can find what you're looking for it's it's really yeah a weird we're, we're seeing like i think our generation is going to just see kind of the the world flip over on itself uh because of this access to information i guess yeah oh yeah yeah being um being a teacher too for a while now i, I definitely have seen the shift in the past 10 years and like what a young person is and how their brains work it's pretty it's pretty crazy I mean, it's <laughs> yeah. um yeah i imagine we're probably pretty close in age so we might have uh you know, kind of memories of the old world before, yeah, stuff was before the internet. And it was pretty different. Yeah. Like, I think like what a human being is, is changing right now. Like, in for sure. it's like, there's, there's, there came a point with working with young people where like these old frames of reference I'd have, like, you know, even like mentioning, like, you know, not using a cell phone or something like that made sense to them. Where it's like, if that idea to like a young person now, it's like, what are you talking about? Right. Yeah. Like, why wouldn't I, why wouldn't I be using social media right now? Like, that's insane. Yeah. You know, to even, <laughs> so it's like, okay, it's just like, it's just changed. So it's funny. We, it, so, this circles back weird. to like when we first started talking about social media and like how you were, uh, really resistant to it and finally decided like, all right, this is a tool that I need to use. And so there is yeah. that aspect of like the internet and social media when used as a tool, it is resourceful and it is like the most valuable oh, yeah. thing that we could have in our pocket at any given time. But when used impulsively or when, when allowed to be a vice or basically, crutch, yeah, or a yeah. crutch, then that's when it becomes harmful and isolating, you know, because yeah. the truth is mentally as, as the ape descendants, we are, our brain is still saying, go to that town center and socialize to learn but then we go on a phone and we're just looking at a video of a past person 
you know, or yeah. what someone thought in the past, their views might have changed. We're getting not up to date information, or like Matt said, anything you want to find, you can find. So there's no, mm -hmm. there's no checks and balances. There's no more culture because everyone can find anything yeah. that they want. Now, it is positive in the sense, like we said at the beginning, it connects us to other artists. And when, you, like I said, when you use yeah. it as a tool, it's great, but it is so like such a thin line before it becomes. Uh, divisive or or manipulative even yeah yeah absolutely that's yeah. wild yeah well dude we're just about coming up on an hour i think this uh is a good wraparound point honestly like we went from start to finish and ended at the same place i love it <laughs> callbacks baby uh. Oh man. Well, <laughs> thank you again for, for sitting down and talking with us and sharing with us, man. Uh, yeah. keep, keep doing what you're doing. I'm a huge fan. I'm going to keep hitting you up for stuff. Um, and if you need oh. anything that Ratness might be able to help you out with, just, just keep me in the loop, man. Hell yeah. Thank you guys so much. No, I really you. appreciate it. Like, honestly, like the fact that you even want to talk to me, I think that that makes my day. So I really appreciate it. Hell yeah. It was really nice to meet you and talk to you, man. Seriously. You, yeah, you too. Your art's great. You seem like a great guy now after getting to spend an hour with you. Like it, it's awesome. And, uh, keep doing exactly what you're doing, bro. Uh, thanks so much guys. Definitely be in touch. Thanks Absolutely. man. Absolutely. This has been another right. episode of the rat nest podcast. You can catch us every week on YouTube for video and any streaming platform for the audio. We will be taking the rest of July off to recoup and recharge. We'll be back in August with brand new episodes. Season four coming at you. Jim. I'm Jim. <laughs> Hell yeah.